Hi everyone, am I audible to you? Can you uh, please respond back? Yeah, you're audible. Yes, okay. Uh, so I uh, let's just wait for a few more minutes. I'm expecting more participants, so uh, we'll begin in like another two to three minutes. All right, guys, let's uh, begin. Am I visible to you guys? <clears throat> oh yes yes can you guys please turn on your yes. videos as well uh in the meanwhile so diksha can you uh introduce yourself yeah please go ahead uh, so uh i basically had bcom honors last year from delhi university okay and, uh, i worked in genpack for like about uh, i think seven to eight months but i don't really like the role that it was hr and i'm oh, sorry for the construction i know it must be annoying but uh, yeah, so I worked there for eight months in HR and I didn't really like that role. So I really wanted to change and I've always had an interest in like numbers, accounting, and I've always been good at okay. it in school or college. So I wanted to pursue that. So after weighing all the options, I wanted to go for ACC. Okay, good to know. And uh, where exactly are you in your ACC journey? Is this like your... This is like my first, uh, first attempt, like in June. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so before this, have you attended any other papers as well? No, this is my first attempt. So, like, I'm giving two papers this time. Okay. Uh, and uh, financial reporting. Financial reporting. Okay. And uh, Tanya. And I hope you're pronouncing your guys' names correctly as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, I've just completed my BCom honors from Delhi University in 2020. And after that, I started working with TPNG India. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I thought to, you know, pursue ACCA because there yeah, I've heard a lot. I've come across many of my seniors who, you know, introduced me to this uh, professional course. So okay. I've just learned about this there and uh, thought to pursue this and gonna get uh, to FR and audit uh, this in this dream. Okay. Okay. So you're both attending. Uh, so you like both like know each other or? No, no right? Okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, both of you seems to be, you know, doing the same paper and, uh, you know, you're both targeting for the uh, June session as well, right? That's uh, yeah. good to know. So, uh, the main idea of this particular session is to just to give you an idea as to, you know, what the Auditor Assurance paper is all about. So, I know that you probably may have, you know, uh, produced all the sessions or so. Uh, so, uh, can you, like, uh, tell me as to where exactly are you uh, with, uh, what exactly is the status regarding the sessions? Have you uh, started watching it or have you completed it? So, can you give me that? <clears throat> uh, Tanya, go ahead. Uh, for mm -hmm. audit, I have completed half of my syllabus and lectures mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Uh, but I have not started my, you know, revision and all because mm -hmm. uh, just get a little less time because of my job. So just okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that's good to know. And Diksha, what's your status? So I completed mm -hmm. watching all the videos except the revision mm -hmm. bootcamp, but all the sessions mm -hmm. I've watched and I've revised it also once. Okay. Okay, that's uh, good to know. So, uh, so now I believe that now is a great time to give you an idea about all the exam structures and you know related aspects as well. And of course, I can also give you an I will also give you an idea as to what exactly should you do next as well. So let me just uh, share my screen. Do let me know when it's possible. I'm showing you a PDF file right now. So, uh, well, not necessarily PDF. Well, it's open in the browser. So, uh, is it visible to you? So this is basically the syllabus of uh, audit and assurance and I know that one of you is like almost complete with this and the other is halfway through with this but there are a few things that you should uh, know regarding these as well. Now if you uh, think about the syllabus I believe that it's it's almost like an audit process itself and uh, if you think about it the first syllabus area itself that is audit framework and regulation is where we talk about the basic stuff of auditing as to what audit is and what are the regulations underlying it etc. And secondly, we talk about planning the audit and uh, risk assessment process. Uh, 
and then we take a look at uh, internal controls where we well as auditors we also look at the uh, you know we might also look at the internal control systems within the organization just to make sure that uh, you know everything is uh, con being conducted appropriately and there's no risk of fraud or error or, or any sort of deficiencies within the organization so that, that, that is basically what we do there and uh, after that, we learn about audit evidence, where we primarily look at uh, things like substantive procedures and collecting evidence so that we can back up our conclusions, etc. So, uh, uh, well, while going through each of these uh, syllabus areas, uh, have you uh, faced any sort of difficulties in any of these uh, areas, such as, uh, do you find any sort of topics to be uh, difficult or a bit hard to remember, etc., something like that? <coughs> I think the substantive procedures, they were a bit mm -hmm. difficult to like learn because I read a lot and I saw like the, the questions also. So okay. like, mm -hmm. that, it was difficult to learn it also and then apply it also like to write right. it itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a common area, you know, uh, spoken by a lot of students as well. So uh, what you have to keep in mind here is that you don't necessarily have to buy hard all the uh, substantive procedures or the example substantive procedures that I've uh, you know showcased in our uh, video lectures. Uh, it, it's just to give you a basic idea as to how to structure it. That's basically all it is. And uh, as for what would happen in the exam, well, you will have to create your own substantive procedures based on the uh, you know scenario information as well as the uh, situation that is within the exam itself. So uh, what I would say is just uh, use the structure that we've learned. And, uh, you know, we're pra keep on practicing a lot of questions regarding that particular area in order to, you know, get the hang of it. And it's actually kind of easy to think of uh, a, a substantive procedure as well. And in further sessions, we will, of course, conduct weekly sessions like these. So in the, one of those sessions, we will be discussing as to, you know, how exactly, well, uh, how exactly can we write substantive procedures? Right? Or we can even practice a question uh, if you would like as well. Now, uh, we'll get more into that. But uh, yeah, after syllabus area D, there is E. Is yet E is yet again another. I would say one of the easiest syllabus areas there is. Uh, there are a few things that you should remember. Uh, exact, uh, for example, the uh, let's say the independent auditors report and uh, the things like that. So uh, that is the uh, I would say one of the core topics that you have to keep in mind when it comes to syllabus part uh, E. Now. Uh, Aside all of these things, these are like the main technical uh, knowledge areas within the syllabus. But uh, additionally, we also have one more syllabus area that is uh, employability and technology skills, which are basically, I, I wouldn't say that there's not much technical knowledge that you will gain here. It's basically a skill that you need to have to, just to attend the exam. So basically, it's, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, where you learn how to, you know, uh, do the questions within the CBE environment or what all Excel tricks and uh, tips can you adopt in the exam but when it comes to the audit and assurance exam we don't usually use the excel it's just you know uh, all uh, like uh, we just type it in within the uh, word document itself not a word documents there's a word for that yeah uh, <coughs> word processor that's basically the word so uh, we basically do this within the word processor itself and uh, we have demonstrated that in one of the questions within the question um, in, within the revision bootcamp itself. So uh, please do take a look at those. And uh, that's basically, I don't think that we haven't necessarily covered this particular syllabus area anyway. It's just a skill that you need to have, or it's just the computer proficiency that you need to have for the exam. That's basically it. Uh -uh. Sorry for interruption, but do you know what is the difference between you and the more aware version of you? Your more aware version would subscribe to our channel Fintram Global and press the bell icon. For keep getting these videos and these updates, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon right now. Okay. So guys, when it comes to the uh, AA exam, it's a three-year exam, as you may know, uh, just like all the other skill level papers as well. But uh, when it comes to the audit and assurance exam, it's kind of different from all the other skill level exams because uh, in all the other skill level exams, we have like three sections, section A, B, and C. And in A, we have like multiple choice questions, uh, which are basically, it's it's just one particular question carrying two marks. That's basically it. And like that, we we, we have like, like 15 of them or so. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's basically what the section A is for the other papers. And section B has uh, something called OTQs or objective 
type questions. So these are basically, uh, you know, uh, where you are given a scenario and five MCQs in relation to that. So basically, it's uh, majorly uh, MCQs when it comes to all the other exams, right? Especially when, uh, since you're attending FR, you may know that uh, the FR paper also carries the same uh, structure as well. But uh, so majorly, you will get around 60 marks for MCQs. And uh, the rest of the 40 marks are available in section C, which is the, uh, you know, uh, areas where you will have to use your Excel as well as what uh, processor skills as well. But when it comes to the audit and assurance exams, there is only like two sections here, section A and section B. In section A, we have about uh, three OTQs. OTQs are basically, as I stated earlier, it's one scenario and five MCQs in relation to that. So... We know that each and every MCQ carries two marks. So since we have five MCQ, that it's basically 10 marks. So each of the uh, uh, three OTQs will carry 10 marks each. So that gives us a total of 30 marks in section A, right? But when it comes to section B, we have the majority of marks available here. 70 marks of the uh, of, of 70 of the remaining marks are available within section C for constructive response questions or basically the case study questions so that's basically it so when we take a look at the uh, case study questions there are uh, two types of questions there are 30 mark questions as well as uh, 20 mark questions as well in your exam you need to expect uh, three OTQs in section A that's there but in section C, sorry, section B, you will have uh, one CRQ worth 30 marks and uh, two CRQs worth 20 marks as well. So uh, we have, of course, practiced a lot of uh, like these kinds of questions, exam standard question, as well as uh, past paper questions throughout our revision bootcamp as well. So please do take a look at those and keep on practicing those. So that is basically the overall exam structure here. But let me tell you guys, uh, it's not just about knowing the exam structure, but what exactly should the strategy be? That's another key thing that we have to think about as well, right? So what exactly is our uh, exam strategy? Well, we already know everything in relation to the preparation aspect of it. We, uh, we will look into that a bit later as well. But when it comes to an exam, I believe that the most key aspect that we have to focus on is the time. Because especially when it comes to the audit and assurance exams, there are a lot of students who say that, you know, it's a bit time, time constraints. We will have to type in a lot of theory. So it can take a lot of time. It, it doesn't necessarily, you know, go as planned sometimes. So there are a lot of uh, feedback like that. So for that, what we have to do is we have to adopt or we have to come up with a time strategy of our own. So what should be the time strategy? Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> So when it comes to uh, the time strategy, we, uh, well, ACC usually has a recommendation for all their uh, papers as to how much time you should take. So uh, ACC recommendation is to take 1.8 minutes per mark, right? And I believe you may have heard this for your, in, any of the other papers that you're, you were sitting for as well. So uh, when it comes to this particular recommendation, uh, I believe that it's a bit too generous. If I were you, I would take more of a conservative approach. Now, what is a conservative approach here? Well, basically, all you have to do is you have to calculate the time on the basis of 1.5 minutes per mark. Well, if you calculate it this way, you will have some uh, buffer time, which you can utilize to, you know, uh, fill in the gaps or, uh, well, what, what I mean by fill in the gaps is that you can utilize that time to, uh, you know, uh, write your answers for the areas that you may have missed out or something like that. So uh, that is basically... An approach that you can take 1.5 minutes per mark so if we are adopting to that strategy then that effectively means that for section a we will take about uh, 45 minutes to tackle that particular area of the exam and when it comes to section b it's a bit different so uh again we are being conservative here because when it comes to you know mcqs well we know that there are a bit uh, MC, a few mcqs which are really direct and it can be easily tackled but at the same time there are also mcqs which can be a bit tricky as well and especially when it comes to the audit and assurance exam i can tell you that you know some questions may seem kind of straightforward and simple but there could be some trick in the wording as well so i highly highly recommend that you read each and every question carefully there will be some uh, you know trick to it so read the question carefully and then uh, you know attend the particular uh, sorry then answer the particular mcq 
Now, going on to the section B. Now, when it comes to section B questions or when it comes to any case study questions uh, in any uh, exam, not just the audit and assurance exam, be it any exam, what you have to do is you, you will have to split the time that you have here. Just split it between reading and planning as well as writing as well. So what exactly or how much time should be allocated to reading and planning and how much time should be allocated to writing the exam? This is basically, uh, I would say, the key strategy that you have to keep in mind here. And this is the, uh, well, the reason why I'm telling you this and uh, the reason why I'm not telling you this uh, just the day before the exam is that so the, you can adopt this particular time strategy while practicing the questions itself. Because, you know, you will get the training there and then it, it won't be something new in the exam and you won't waste a lot of time in the exam. So adopt this particular time strategy while practicing your questions as well. So, yeah, that's a really key important point. Now, when it comes to section C, we have, of course, the 30 mark question, first of all. And for the 30 mark question, what you're going to do is you're going to take 10 minutes to read and plan. Now, what is reading and planning? Well, it's kind of a simple procedure here. Well, what we do here basically is we read the requirement, of course. We can't just, you know, read the scenario and go to the requirement when it comes to ACC exams. We need to understand what we are looking for to, you know, uh, understand these or to, to, to uh, locate the key areas or key points within the scenario itself. So we read the requirements first and then move on to the uh, scenario. And secondly, we... Uh, you know, highlight the important points that we have to highlight and then we plan a structure for our answer. So just uh, keep that particular uh, point in mind. Now, <clears throat> so we take 10 minutes to read and plan and 45 minutes to write down your answer. Just follow the structure. Now, moving on to the uh, 20 mark question and I can see that the video has went off. So it would be really appreciated if you turn on the video because, you know, I feel like, you know, speaking to a wall. So, yeah, please turn on your uh, videos as well. So uh, I'm just going to move on. Uh, when it comes to the 20 mark question, uh, we have seven minutes for reading and planning and 30 minutes to write our answers. <clears throat> Okay, so we have 10 minutes over there and 10 minutes over there. Well, this is basically because we're adopting to the uh, 1.5 per mark strategy. That's basically why. So uh, that's basically the uh, split that you have to keep in mind whenever you're practicing a question. And guys, let me tell you, there are a lot of students. What they do is uh, they just, uh, you know, read through the questions, or, sorry, read through the uh, answers, sorry, read through the questions and then the answers rather than, you know, typing it in or writing it down, etc. Well, there's, uh, there's no need to, you know, write your answers down anymore because uh, our practice should be based on, a, you know, our exam is like computer based. So definitely we'll have to learn how to type it in quicker, right? So while practicing question, I... While practicing questions, I would highly suggest that you, you know, type in your answers within the, uh, like Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, etc. I don't think we use Excel here. So yeah, just type in your answer in Microsoft Word and then, uh, you know, practice it like that. That's something that I would highly recommend as well. And I have shown you how to do these things or how to structure your answers and other exam related tips and tricks within the, uh, you know, uh, within the uh, video lectures itself. So don't worry about that now moving on to uh, so that's basically the time strategy just keep this in mind and i hope that you all are noting it down as well now moving on so what should the uh, plan of attack be that's basically another question that you may have right so <coughs> sorry about that now what you have to understand here is you are in progress with step one. We already know that, isn't it? So you, you, are, you have started learning the syllabus. And that is like the key point here. The first step that you have to do in order to prepare for this exam is to learn the syllabus. And I'm not talking about, you know, learning like maybe 50% or 80% of the syllabus. I'm talking about learning 100% of the syllabus. And I don't know that if you know this, but when it comes to the, uh, you know, audit and assurance exam, there are a, a, a common, a few common misconceptions, I would say. So what are these? Well, these are basically the uh, idea that, you know, you can expect the questions that can come up. 
well this is basically something that uh, you know some students do i would say the the weak exam candidates or the poor exam candidates do uh, you know, when they sit for the exam so what is question spotting all about well basically they are trying to expect as to what can come up there are some questions that can you know usually come up within the exam such as there are audit risk questions or internal control deficiency questions substantive procedures are a mandatory thing but we don't know as to what kind of questions it would be we just know that there would be substantive procedures or there would be internal control deficiencies etc so what you have to keep in mind here is that even though these questions can be expected in every exam you can definitely find a question where they test uh, you know, the audit risk related aspects and uh, you know you were also asked to require to write the response to audit risk as well so this is like, something that we can expect in the exam and uh, you know uh, the question in relation to identifying internal control deficiencies can also be expected questions in relation to substantive procedures can be expected question in relation to uh, audit reporting can be expected or impact on the audit report due to an accounting issue or any other issue can be expected in the exam yes but that's not the majority of marks available there is it so there are a few other questions which are i would say which are like uh, you know four mark or five mark questions direct theory questions which you may have to tackle within the exam and in order to know these you will have to have a good grasp of the syllabus you have we will have to have uh, you know an idea about all the uh, uh, even the small uh, topics within the syllabus itself so grasp the syllabus entirely uh, learn the 100% of the syllabus and each and every concept and topics if you are faced with any questions or any queries that you will have you want to ask me then you can definitely you know contact me regarding that as well i believe you guys are provided with the uh, whatsapp number right yeah okay so you can just uh, definitely okay so you can just uh, you know uh, you know send me a message regarding any questions that you have i believe that's kind of you know easy as of now so uh, <clears throat> so that uh, so that i can clear that as well and of course uh, when it comes to learning the syllabus let me just point out this as well if you find any topic to be difficult from the lecture or if you want to discuss any topic Uh, in a live session then you can request that particular aspect within uh, you know just uh, send me a message regarding that and uh, you know we can conduct a, a live session we can discuss that particular topic in the next live session that that will be conducted now uh, moving on <clears throat> now the second step after learning the syllabus is of course to practice the questions now uh well if this was a let's say a bcom exam or uh let's say our uh, let's say a 12th grade exam or something like that basically a degree exam or so we can just you know by heart a lot of you know uh, theoretical uh, aspects from the textbooks and then you know write our answers right and well i personally do, during my uh, let's say uh, bcom exams what i did was i just you know created the answers myself using a few sentences that i remember from my textbooks that's kind of a you know a normal approach that we take to these kinds of exams but when it comes to professional exams that that doesn't necessarily you know work out here so uh, the idea is basically this in professional exams especially like acca what they do is they test your skills rather than their rather than the knowledge that you have you may know as to what audit is and by stating what is audit you can get maybe like two marks within your degree exams but not in, not over here here you will be required to uh, you know act as an auditor within a practical scenario right so you will have to apply your knowledge use the knowledge that you have to find out solutions rather than you know stating the uh, knowledge plainly itself so that is basically one of the key things that you have to keep in mind here when the examiner asks for audit risk you shouldn't state what audit risk is you should state as to what is the audit risk within the given scenario itself unless of course they're directly telling you as to you know, right as to what the audit risk is or what components of audit risk are etc and that's kind of like a common question as well but yeah uh, laying that aside <clears throat> more majorly i would say uh majorly they would test uh you know aspects which require you to apply your knowledge rather than to plainly you know state the by hearted definitions or uh textbook phrases etc so yeah keep that in mind so practice uh, a lot of questions i would say don't just stop with the uh revision boot camps whenever you can find a lot of questions be it from the exam kits or be it from anywhere else just keep on practicing that that's basically something that i would highly recommend as well now <clears throat> moving on 
and yeah when it comes to our uh let's say revision boot camp questions well these are basically you know uh we have included uh, questions from each and every aspect of the syllabus and we've included every type of questions as well and if something comes up to be a new type of questions we will discuss that within a live session as well so don't worry about that now uh just to reassure you regarding that now moving on to the next step that is step three step three is basically to do the past paper questions now when it comes to the past papers uh one thing that you have to keep in mind is that what i would personally suggest is if I were you, I would start practicing the past papers just a few weeks before the exam. That's basically something that I would do. Because why I say that? Well, the idea here is basically this. Well, you know, you go to level three after doing level one, two, etc. Right. But when it comes to, you know, the questions that, that are available within the uh, exam kits or any other resources, these are like level two questions and if you want to move on to the next level then that would be the past paper questions so with practice you will be able to you know develop your skills develop your uh, you know thought process during attending a particular question so uh, it, it's best if you you know do these past papers after gaining some practice as to how to do questions that's basically the reason why i'm telling you to you know practice these just a few weeks before the exam and i believe that we don't have that much of a uh, yeah we do have a few past papers available within the acc website itself so yeah you can practice it from there itself now and we have also done a few past papers within the revision bootcamp as well <clears throat> now uh it's not just about practicing these questions, but it's also about, uh, you know, uh, reading the examiner's report as well. We have two resources provided by the ECC itself. One is the past paper, which is a great resource, definitely. And secondly, we also have the examiner's report as well, right? So I would say whenever you are uh, attending a past paper from the ECC's website, you should also take a look at the examiner's report as well. Now, why do I say this? Well, this is basically because, uh, you know, you'll get an idea as to what the examiner expects you will get an idea as to what the strong candidates within the exam has done and what the poor candidates within the exam has done you avoid as to what the poor candidates did and you would you know uh, improve upon yourself by knowing what the strong uh, candidates have done as well right so that's basically the idea here so, so read the examiner's report as well after attending a past paper question <clears throat> So uh, you can, of course, adopt this particular uh, strategy for your other papers as well, just to point that out. Now, after this, after doing the past papers, the next step would be, or next step of preparing for your exam would be to do a mock exam. Now, or we will, of course, definitely provide you with a mock exam. Just attend that, and I will provide you with the individual feedback or a specific feedback so that you can get a better understanding as to what are the areas that you lack in, and you can improve upon that as well. And this is usually conducted within the, uh, I believe, during the last weeks of the month before the exam, which is basically May, May, June, right? Yeah. So that usually the last week of June, or, sorry, last week of May or so. So, yeah. And finally, all you have to do is, while well, you're fully prepared, you can just go write your exam. That's basically it. <clears throat> And an overall process that you have to keep on doing, uh, you know, during each of these steps is to continuously revise the syllabus. Not, it's not just about learning the syllabus and practicing a lot of questions because some students, what they do is they learn the syllabus, they practice the questions and they, they try to learn again because they've forgotten some things, etc. So keep on continuously revising things on a daily basis. Find the time to revise during a daily basis. It could be, uh, you know, during the lunch breaks that you have uh, while working or it could be uh, a few hours uh, at the night or during the day, etc. So find the time to do that. And uh, yeah, that's basically how you prepare for the exam. Now, so I've told you as to what exactly should be done to prepare for the exam. This is basically the framework. So now let's just, uh, you know, create a plan for it. I'll just give you a basic idea as to how to, uh, you know, plan for this as well. Uh, give me a minute. Let me just uh, open up a few things. <clears throat> So do you have any other questions in relation to any topics or something like that? Feel free to shoot them now. I don't think for now, but I think once I start doing questions, then I'll come up okay. with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <clears throat> Tanya, anything from your side? 
uh, well, not yet, not anything. Uh, but I just, I'm just a little bit concerned about you know, uh, we have to um, institute in which we have to choose multiple answers, right? So I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the last part wasn't clear. Can you repeat that, please? Well, I was saying that I'm little concerned, you know, about uh, uh, those in MCQs in which we have to choose more than one option. Okay. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, is there any idea or trick or something, you know, uh, by which we can uh, guess that uh, we could have more than one answer in this question or something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, in most cases, the. Uh the, the question will specifically say how many answers you have to select, right? It would select like select two out of the out of these options or select three or four out of the uh, list provided to you, etc. Right. So, well, when it comes to tackling these kinds of questions, you know, not just these kinds of questions, but when it comes to tackling any sort of MCQs, I believe that the best approach here would be to cancel out the wrong options. And uh, I've pretty much demonstrated these while practicing questions within the revision bootcamp as well. So you just, you know, cancel out the wrong options. If, if you cancel out the wrong options, uh, then you can definitely, uh, you know, the chances that you'll select the right answer will increase, right? So that's basically it, rather than just, you know, randomly selecting things. It wouldn't necessarily work when it comes to, you know, choosing numbers. But yeah, when it comes to a theoretical questions, you can definitely you know, cancel out the answer to choose the right options. Well, in order to, you know, choose the correct options, you will definitely need to have that, uh, you know, uh, a good grasp of the syllabus itself. So that's something that uh, that is something that I've uh, specifically stated earlier as well. This is exactly why you need to have the uh, key idea of each and every topics and concepts within the syllabus itself. So just have that knowledge and, you know, think it through. Uh, the thought process is a bit, you know, tricky part to come by, but with practice, it can be, uh, you know, uh, you can develop that particular skill. Okay, thank you. So I believe that uh, Tanya, right, right now you work in KPMG, right? Yes. Is the busy season over? Yeah. Right. How was it? Uh, I would say terrible because it's <laughs> really affecting my studies. Okay. So what's your position? Do you level. like work in the uh, audit Probably division? Or? Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, Diksha, where, where do you, I mean, what do you work as? I'm working as a management trainee right now. Management trainee, okay. Yeah. In the construction industries, right? I'm working in GenPact, in HR actually. When I okay. To HR, okay. Yeah. So, I have one more question. Like, how sure. many hours do you recommend we should study in a day? Like, Oh, per subject. I would say for, well, since you're a working professional, uh, how much time can you keep aside? I'm asking you, so then I'm going <laughs> accordingly. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say just at least try to, you know, set aside around uh, a minimum of four hours, I guess, I guess. Well, if I were you, well, I personally have a, you know, work time of, let's say, 10.30 to, let's say, uh, 7.30 or so. If that is the case, then... Uh, what I would do is I would just, I'm like an early riser. So uh, in the morning, I would set aside like two hours and in the evening, two hours. That's basically what I usually do. <clears throat> Every day. Yeah. During the weekdays. Of course, during the you know weekends, you can, you need to have like at least like six to 10 hours or so, I guess. Well, it might seem like, well, when I say like six to 10 hours, it might seem like a bit too much. But uh, honestly speaking, it's kind of, you know, you won't know the time that the time will, you know, get, you know, utilized so quickly once you start practicing the questions. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> uh, one. Any other question that you guys have? And please do attend the uh, live sessions that I provide because we discuss a lot of important stuff. So don't miss out on that. Okay. Is it visible, guys? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. So do you know when the exam date is? It's on 6th of the June, right? Yeah. 
So June 6th is basically the uh, date that we have to focus on here. Now, how do we plan our preparation? Now, this is a key thing that you may have, you would like some advice on. I, I would, I could bet on that actually. So uh, when it comes to, you know, planning things uh, to prepare for the exam, we usually take a backwards approach. So what is the backwards approach that I'm talking about? Well, think about this. How exactly does the companies, you know, set aside duties and responsibilities or how do they allocate responsibilities? Do, can you give me an idea? Diksha, can you uh, tell me how the company works? They work on the objectives that mm -hmm. they're supposed to achieve and they plan accordingly. Like, mm -hmm. right. the that they so that companies, they what they do is they set an objective and then they make a long-term strategy or the course of action to achieve that objective, right? So they take a long-term plan and then what they do is they take uh, short-term, uh, like medium-term plans and then short-term plans, etc. And then they allocate responsibilities to each individuals. This is what happens, right? So we're following the same approach here. Our first objective, what is our objective here? Our objective is to pass the exams on the 6th <laughs> or during this week, since you have FR exam as well. I don't know. I don't actually remember the date for that. But yeah, uh, the objective here is basically to pass the exam during this week, right? So in order to do this, what should our uh, strategy be? That's the next uh, question. Or what should be, what should the, uh, I would say, medium or short term plans be? Now, well, I've already discussed as to what are the things that you need to do to prepare for the exam. You learn the syllabus, we practice questions, we do the past papers, we do the mock, right? That's basically it uh, for simple things. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, structure or plan these things from the date of the exam till the, uh, or till the uh, you know current date as of now which is uh, the 2nd of april so uh, i would say that i would utilize the last week that i have for the exam i would select this week that i've highlighted in the slight blue color to do the past paper questions that's something that i can do isn't it uh, i could allocate like maybe well since you guys are all pro working professionals i could allocate maybe a few more time to do this i would say There you go. So yeah, 22nd. So I can utilize this particular time to maybe, uh, you know, practice the past paper questions, read through the examiner's report, etc. That's something that I can do. And uh, we usually conduct mock exams during these dates. Uh, well, this is not a fixed date here. I'm just, you know, showing this to you to provide, give you an example. So let's say that I'm writing the mock exam on the 28th. Uh, if that is the case, then when do I practice questions? Well, I will practice questions during this time phase. So let's say that uh, how many questions do you want to practice or how many questions can you practice? That's an interesting question, isn't it? So uh, just think of that. Uh, Tanya, what's your idea here? Um, well, that depends upon the topic. Mm -hmm. I... Um, it's a uh, you know it doesn't necessarily i don't I think it depends upon the uh, topic here because uh, you will have some amount of i would say you you do have around uh, i would say like 50 questions or so including all the uh, uh, excluding the i would say yeah uh, as for mcqs i would say there are like maybe 100 to 200 mcqs available in uh, various resources as of now and uh, as for the other one as for the uh, the section B kind of questions, you would have around 50 to 60 questions available for you. Uh, and this includes both the 30 marks as well as the 20 mark questions as well. So if that is the case, what's your plan? I guess for MCQs, I'll go for 400 uh, MCQs, I would say. Uh, and for um, okay, theory. yeah, I'm not, I'm I'm uh, let me just clear one thing. I'm not asking you to you know choose a percentage of questions from the questions that we have. I'm asking you as to how much questions can you do per day. That's basically it. <clears throat> 
you will definitely have to do like 100 to 200 questions or uh, mcqs or uh, 50 to 60 uh, like constructive response questions as you will have to practice that let me tell you that but uh, the question is how much time would you take or uh, it, it's not about how much time you would take more about how, how much uh, questions can you do during the working days now this is something that you should decide right so that's basically what i'm asking here uh, <clears throat> I guess I can take out approx 3 or 3.5 hours a day to practice questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that will give that, you around yeah. two to uh, 3 to 4 questions, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is during weekdays, I believe. Yes. I just hope. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, you can practice around, let's say, uh, three to four questions. Sudiksha, what about you? Yeah, I think the same. When it comes to MCQ, I think you can do like 40 to 50 also, like in a day, because mm -hmm. that you don't take a lot of time. But mm -hmm. when it comes to section B, I think you have the same four to five questions in a day. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So, uh, let me just give you an idea here. When it comes to, let's say, 30 mark questions, we already have, uh, you know, the reason why I've told you the time strategy is due to this reason as well. I know that you're all working professionals. So use that particular time strategy to, you know, uh, provide a time limit so that you can, uh, this is the time that I would take to write the question. And this is the, well, I could also take like maybe uh, 15 to 20 minutes to read through the answers and learn as to what exactly, where exactly did I miss or where, like, where exactly did I uh, go wrong, etc. Right. So I would say that if, let's say, 30 mark question can take up to, let's say, an hour. I believe it takes an hour or so, right? Around, yeah, an hour, or an hour or so. 45 minutes plus 10 minutes, so 55. Yeah, let's say it takes an hour to just write the 30 mark question. Then definitely you can take another half an hour to learn through the question as well. So one, one and a half hours to do one question. Okay, so just you will have to you know, create short term plans like these every day. Okay, so this is the day. Of, for example, let's say that uh, on Friday night I'm going on a date. So if that is the case, then definitely I will have to, you know, make plans for my studies as well, right? So I, I may not, I may have like f had like four hours during the weekday since I have work as well. But uh, two hours are set aside for the date, so I'll just, you know, uh, utilize the rest of the two hours to, you know, practice the as much questions as I can. So this is what you have to do. So each day you will have to make a plan to practice a specific number of questions. And then, you know, follow that plan strictly. That's basically something that you have to do as well. Now, uh, when it comes to Saturdays and Sundays, then I'll let you make your own plans. I'm not you know, going to fix upon, fixate upon a number here. This, this is just to give you an idea. That's basically it. <clears throat> so our long-term plan, that's basically what we are, uh, you know, planning here. The short-term plan or medium-term plans can, you know, you, you can do that yourselves because every individual has their own responsibilities. So you can just plan according uh, to that. So uh, as for the long-term plan, this is basically it. Uh, the last few weeks, I'll pass my, I'll uh, practice my past papers and read the examiner's report. I'm maybe do, I'll maybe do the mock on, let's say, 28th or 27th. We will communicate the date to you, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> and as for this particular, as for the rest of the month of uh, May, I will practice questions. Now, how do you utilize April? <clears throat> so, uh, you, some of you may have already, uh, or may, you might be close to like finishing off, let's say the, uh, <clears throat> what was it? Yeah, the syllabus, right? So what I would say is uh, you can just utilize the this particular month for your second subject if you want, because you guys are also doing an, another subject as well. I wouldn't, you know, uh, if I were you, what I would do is I would just, focus on one subject at a time. For example, if you're attending FR, then focus on FR first and then audit because that's a bit more easier. You will have to have the accounting standards knowledge uh, in FR that you can apply on the audit and assurance paper, right? So you will have to have to keep that in mind as well. So uh, I would say, first of all, focus on FR, maybe allocate some days like these for FR. And I would say that uh, you, you should, I would say the minimum amount of days that would, that you would take to learn the syllabus itself can be let's say 15 days or so right you can just do that in 15 days that's totally fine and, and you can take another maybe 15 days for a question practice how many days have i taken here it looks like i've taken too much time yeah it, 
since you're all working professionals, it might take this much time. So yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let's say that uh, I utilize these weeks for, let's say, learning the syllabus. I know that some of you are already done with it or are halfway through with it. That's totally fine. You can redesign the schedule if you want. That's totally fine. This is just to give you an idea. So, uh, so since you are, let's say, let's take uh, Tanya's case here as as of now. So you went through halfway the of the syllabus, right? Yes. <clears throat> right. So if that is the case, then what I would do is for uh, I would just try to finish the uh, let's say the rest of the syllabus areas in the next let's say four to five days. That's possible, right? Yes. It okay. Can be possible. It could be, or it you can take the next week itself. And maybe the week after that, you can focus on, let's say, FR, and then practice questions for FR. And then, uh, well, uh, as of past papers, as I stated before, you can just do, do that close before the, uh, you know, the exam day, that's totally fine. The weeks before the exam day, that's totally fine as well. So uh, after that, just, uh, you know, focus on the syllabus related, sorry, the syllabus related aspects of um, AA, and then... Uh, I wouldn't, you don't have to relearn again. So I would say just revise through what you've learned and then, uh, you know, practice questions. So this should be your, I believe the only, what, hold on a second. <clears throat> Am I going wrong somewhere? No. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this is basically an ideal, uh, I would say, preparation strategy that you can adopt for one, if you're only taking for one particular subject. Now, if that is not the case, since that is not the case, then I would suggest, uh, you know, including some time for the second subject as well. So as to how much time it would be, it all depends upon how much, uh, you know, hours that you can set aside each day or how much questions that you can uh, set aside or, or practice each day, etc. So plan accordingly. So this is basically uh, just to give you an idea as to what the long term plan should be. And as for how to prepare all the medium term or short term plans, it's all always up to you because I don't have enough data to create a plan for you as of now. So yeah, uh, I hope this gives you an idea. And uh, do you have any questions in this? <clears throat> Or do you need any advice on preparing a schedule or so? Uh, no, just one question. That mm -hmm. you, can you suggest us the number of questions we could, uh, we could you know, set as a target to prepare theoretical uh, questions? Okay. So for your... Okay, since you're attending two subjects, I would say... Hold on a second. <clears throat> Hmm. How many questions do you have available for your FR? Do you have any idea about that? Uh, no, I don't have that idea. Right mm -hmm. now. Okay. I think there would be around 500 questions for Section A and Section B. I'm not talking about the uh, FinTram resources as of now because I'm not sure about that, but... Uh, I believe that when it comes to exam kits, there should be around 500 questions from both revision kits or uh, a single revision kits or so. I'm talking about BPP and Kaplan here. So uh, yeah, around 500 MCQs. That's, uh, and MCQs includes both Section A type and Section B type questions. And as for CRQs, I would say there should be around 50, I guess. Usually that's the number that they go by. So I, I could effectively uh, state that. If that is the case, then I would say uh, 50 is basically, I'm saying 50 because, uh, you know, it's, it's just a random guess. I'm not sure exactly as to how, man, how many or how, many, how much questions there are. But I can suggest you one thing here. When it comes to the ACC website, you can find the past papers till the year, I would say, 2000 well it used to be 2017 but now it's a bit different i think it's not right now it's 2018 or so you can find the past papers till that particular year but uh when it comes to the exam kits you can find a past paper questions within the crq section so you can find the past paper questions even beyond that within your exam kits i believe so i would say just uh, include those for now if, if you have time left, then practice the other. I would say prioritize the past paper questions within your resources first, other than the, you know, boot camp. Uh, 
well the boot camp includes everything that you already need to uh, need to have right so you should prioritize that first of all and then uh you know when you're practicing let's say exam kit questions you can prioritize the past paper crqs rather than the normal crqs because the normal crqs are obvious it's uh, to be frank that's kind of really easy so you won't get any learning experience from uh, you know doing those questions so i would say just uh keep a pause on that if you have time then you can you know practice those otherwise just uh, leave it be just practice the ones that are you know uh, that are referred to as a past paper question that's something that i would highly recommend so uh, let's if if that's the case coming back to your question here if since that is the case i would say that during weekdays try to practice at least four questions four to five questions i would say just try to make the time for that uh and when it comes to because you know uh, mostly these questions will be 20 mark questions and we know that 20 mark questions can take like an hour to 45 minutes so that's basically it because you you will have 30 minutes to attend that particular question and maybe 15 minutes to learn from it right so that should be the thought process here by that logic you can do up to let's say uh, three to five questions three to five questions per day target that as to what the exact number is, I, I'm not sure about that because, uh, you know, it all depends upon your time availability as well. So I can, uh, all I can do is I can just suggest that you can take up at least, uh, you know, you can do at least three to five questions per day during weekdays. And as for weekends, more than that, maybe eight. eight it seems to be a, a, a suitable number. So, yeah, you can go with that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. As for MCQs, well, that depends upon your capacity, honestly, because, yeah, we are not, I'm not exactly sure how many MCQs that you can do per day. So, yeah, there's that. And how much time it would take to grasp a particular MCQ as well. So, it can take time. And FR MCQs can take, uh, you know, more time than any other, you know, theoretical MCQs as well. So, keep that in mind. <clears throat> any other questions? Tanya, anything from your side? No, nothing. All right. Okay. So that's all what I wanted to cover in this particular session. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me through WhatsApp. Uh, and uh, we will be having more and more live sessions like these uh, where we discuss a lot of important stuff. We, we will discuss some uh, questions at times. We discuss some we discuss about some, uh, you know, examiner's report or various other resources that we have. So, uh, you know, always attend these kinds of live sessions. You will be notified regarding that, regarding that. So don't worry about it. So attend these and then, you know, we can, you know, learn more together. So, uh, if you have any sort of, you know, difficult topics, then you can definitely, you know, uh, suggest me to discuss this within a live session as well. So, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. And I will see you later in the next sessions as well. Okay, then. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.